Welcome to Chess. Featuring Sally. Right. So what are we going to do today, Sally? Learn how to play chess. We're going to learn how to play chess. Featuring Horn Race. Actually, that's going to be the title of this stream. Lettuce. Lettuce. Let us change that up and go. Learning how to pog off? No. Um, hold on. Instead of learning how to pog off, we are going to pawn race pog off. Pogging off pawn race. Now we need a little N. Oh, wait, no, hold on. I have an even better title. <laughs> now, now, now this is pod racing. <laughs> This, this is this is 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 pod racing. Was it pod racing? No. Then why did he say it?
Now that is porn racing. <laughs> Both sides are racing pawns to promote. Which pawn should white move to win the race? Ooh, that's a great question. Steve. Um, considering the ins and outs of chess, what do you think, Sally? That one? Yeah. Why would you think that one? Because it's closer. Let's see if you are correct. Excellent. Keep going. Great job. White promotes first. And notice the new queen protects black's promotion square. She's good. She is good. Which pawn should white advance to win the pawn race? This one? Why not? This one? Excellent. White advances the pawn that does not have a piece blocking its promotion path. Keep pushing it forward. Good job. Black is checkmated. There's so much positive reinforcement. White has two pawns that can march forward and promote in two moves. Which pawn sh move is best? The left one? You're saying this one? Why is that one? It can then just take it. Next. Both pawns are raising to promote with white to move. Should white promote or should white first prevent black from promoting? What do you say, Sally? No, just... just move the pawn? Yeah, move the... That's not going to do anything. It's fine. Where would you... Yes or no? Yay or nay? Well, we do want to stop it promoting, but like... No. Oh, yes, do that. F2? Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Excellent. White's king protects the promotion square, ready to capture Black's pawn if it is promotes. White can safely promote to a queen on the next move. White's only hope is to promote the pawn, but it is about to be captured by Black's king. Can you find a king move that protects the pawn and prepares to safely promote it to the next turn? What what is that square called? E seven. Boom. She writes excellent work. Now let's promote to the pawn. Oh, lesson complete. You got it, pro <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we love that. Next lesson. Castling early in the game is generally a good Notice all of Black's pieces have left the back rank, and the king is all alone. Remember, ranks are what we call rows in chess. What would happen if you were able to check the king on the back rank? Let's see. Rook to e8 delivers checkmate. Black's own pawns prevent the king from escaping the back rank. Let's look at this position again, but this time with a slight difference in the position. Do you notice the difference in this position? Black's pawn on h7 has moved to h6. This opens up a window for the black king in case white delivers a check on the back rank. Black escapes white's attack, and now it's white's turn to be cautious. If white tries to save a pawn with a4, a pawn may be saved, but the game will be lost. Notice white's back rank is completely unprotected. One of black's rooks can deliver a check, 
let's say rook to d1, which forces rook e1. And now after rook takes e1, it's checkmate. So how could white have avoided this back rank checkmate? Remember, the best way to avoid a back rank checkmate is to push a pawn in front of the king as a window for escape from the back rank. In this position, white could play h3, opening the h2 square for escape if black delivers a check on the back rank. Let's take a look at one more position. In this position, should white capture the pawn on b6? When you think about moving a piece, always ask, what is the space left behind? In this case, if the rook leaves b1, the back rank is left behind. This allows black to finish the game with a back rank checkmate. Obviously, white cannot allow this to happen, so let's see what white should do instead. White needs to open a window for the king's escape and move one of the pawns in front of the king. But which pawn should be moved? Let's try g3. This does open a window for white's king to escape the back rank, but it also weakens light squares right in front of white's king. This allows black to play bishop to h3, preventing the white king from escaping the back rank. So g3 actually makes white's king less safe. This leaves us with moving the h-pawn. After h3, white's king now has an escape square on h2, so back rank checkmate is no longer an issue. White can now capture the pawn on b6 with the rook on the next turn if black leaves it unprotected. Now that you've learned how to deliver and avoid back rank checkmate, it's your turn to practice back rank checkmates. Now, now, now that. <laughs> black. Black rank. Black, black ranks. Uh, the position looks equal, but Black's king is stuck on the back rank without any protection. Unsafe. Can you find the move that immediately wins for white? Is that what you said, Sally? Oh, fantastic. White delivers a back rank checkmate. Glorious. Taking it out for Australia. White has a weak pawn on B3. But both white's rooks are pointing at black's back rank. Can you find a winning combination for white on the back rank? I agree. Fantastic. White forces black to capture the rook. It's time to deliver a back rank checkmate. Great job. You've already done it. Next. White's king is in serious danger. Can you find the best defense for white? Yes? Excellent job. White protects the back rank with a good position. <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> Taking it. Ah. Uh, that's fine. The only way to prevent immediate checkmate is to play rook e1. <laughs> Try <laughs> Sorry. You try. Get it. <laughs> Look, he's saying it. Blame Steve, not me. Black queen is hanging. Or is it? Can you find a forced win for white based upon black's weak back rank? No. No? Can you not find one? Can you do it in reverse? One can successfully sacrifice one's queen for the immediate win. Fant <laughs> Great. Black's queen is the only piece protecting the back rank. Can you find a way to force the queen to leave the back rank and allow our back rank checkmate for 
white. Can you? Huh? Punk? It's all up to you. Can you find a way to force the queen to leave? Use your queen. Where are we where are we moving the queen? A four. This move does not force the black queen to leave the back rank. Try again, Devon. Honestly, I like it. I like it. Fair. Incredible. White threatens to take black's queen with checkmate. To follow, so black is forced to accept the sacrifice. Can you play a back rank checkmate for white? Hey, great job! That was a good move. Get wrecked, get wrecked, black. The concept of counting attackers and defenders is important in every move in chess. You always want to make sure your pieces are well defended. Now keep in mind, because of the way the chessboard is set up from the start, there are two particularly weak squares, the F2 and F7 pawns. Take a moment to look at why that might be. If you notice that it's because the only defenders are the kings, you're right. A lone king is not a strong defender. So in many games of chess, a quick attack on the vulnerable f-pawns can sometimes be effective. Let's take a look at one of the most classic examples of a quick f7 attack. White plays e4, opening up the bishop and queen, as well as controlling the center. Black fights for control of the center with e5. White plays knight f3, attacking the e5 pawn. And black plays d6, protecting the pawn. Now white plays bishop to c4. What do you notice about the placement of white's light-squared bishop? It's pointing directly at the weak f7 pawn. Black needs to be careful, but in this case doesn't do so, and plays a6. With the slow idea of playing b5 and attacking the light-squared bishop. But this idea is too slow. Notice black has only moved pawns, and white continues to gain a lead in development by bringing another piece into the game with knight to c3. Black realizes the a6 plan was too slow and decides to change plans by playing bishop to g4, pinning the white knight to the queen. Now is this an absolute pin or a relative pin? It's a relative pin, so white plays the crazy looking knight takes e5. Black cannot believe such great luck and immediately captures white's queen. But what would happen if black would have captured white's knight with d takes e5 instead? In this case, white would capture the bishop on g4 and gain an extra pawn from the captures. Let's go back to the position where black captures white's queen. What do you notice about white's pieces and how they relate to the f7 square? White has two attackers on f7, the knight and the bishop, and black's only defender is the lone king. So white plays bishop takes f7 check. Black's king cannot capture the bishop because it's protected by the knight. Also notice the powerful knight on e5 protects d7. So that means the king can only move to e7. After king e7, white has a forced checkmate. Can you find the winning move? It's knight d5, checkmate. All three of white's developed pieces work together to checkmate the black king. Now let's see if you can find the best attacking moves against the F2 and F7 squares. I'm actually in love with it.
There's a bunch of them that are like, ooh, like I feel like I want to try that one. All right, let's develop white's light squared bishop to a diagonal that points at black's weakest point, the f7 pawn. Though it does require them to have a pretty weak position and a bunch of dumb moves. Though I guess it's good to learn all of the like, if they are dumb formations. Um, what are we doing? Let's develop white's light squared bishop. Sure. What? Oh. Oh. Oh, bishop. Great job. Black just pin white's knight to f3 with bishop to g4. Let's bring white's other knight into the game and help control the center. Excellent job. White developed another piece in the game and the black rest wasted time in the pawn move. Can you find a powerful combination of the attacks on f7 and black's king? Horsey. Amazing. Excuse me? What am I doing? Let's capture the f7 pawn with check. Oh, with the bishop. Noise. Noise. Let's play the incredible knight takes e5 move again and see if black has a better defense. We're up to this one. This move does not capture blacks. Oh, we have to move this bad boy. Excellent. We already know what happens if black captures white's queen. Can you find a capture for white to gain material? Gaboosh. Excellent. White captures the bishop and is now up a pawn with excellent development. Even with Black's best defense, White has a much better game. I like. Black's bishop attacks White's weak f2 pawn with Black to move. Can you find a way to safely add a second attacker to White's weakness? What do we... Horsey. This horsey? This horsey? Where are we putting it? There? This move does not add another attacker against white's weak f2 pawn. Try again. f2 pawn. We want another attacker for f2 pawn. Another attacker. I'm going to say this. Ah, noise. Black's knight joins the attack on f2 when white does not have a good way to defend. Black will win material on the next move. Black's bishop is attacking the f2 pawn. Can you add a second piece to help attack the f2 and attack the unprotected b2 pawn at the same time? f2, b2, same time. Because he can just take me. F2 and B2. <laughs> okay, now I'm a little confused. Hold on. Who are we attacking? Are we... We're blank? And we want to... Add a second piece to help attack the F2 and attack the unprotected B2 pawn at the same time. In one move. It can't be done. It's probably going to be a, a hole. No, you can't. That's pinned. And it's not attacking that. No one can achieve an attack. Black's bishop is attacking the f2 pawn. It sure is. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This is a, a doozy. I actually have no idea. Because it wasn't that. And it's not that. Huh. 
And they can't go anywhere. I need a hint. Why don't you just keep taking it? Taking what, that? This move does not safely add a second attack to the F2 pawn. Try again. Safely. Safely. I don't know. You can't read the lips. I'm asking for a hint. Black's powerful queen can attack both F2 and F2 at the same time. Black's powerful queen. Uh, uh, uh. Ah, oh, it's not like directly attacking. Oh my goodness, that's brilliant. Excellent job. Black attacks both the F2 and the B2 pawns at once while white castles to safety. Let's win with B2 pawn. It's funny that that is part of the. Huh. 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 The entire huh. game of chess is about checkmating the king. So while you might be winning in terms of having more pieces, or dominating the board, or having more time on your clock, if your opponent finds a way to checkmate you, it's game over. So above all else, you must protect your king. You've already learned that castling is one way to protect your king and get it out of the dangerous center. Even after you have castled, you need to keep your king safe. Let's take a look at some examples of king safety. In this position, black is in danger of being checkmated. Notice the weak dark squares around the king. White is ready to play queen g7 checkmate on the very next turn. How can black add a defender to the g7 square and avoid checkmate? Bishop f8. The dark squared bishop arrives just in time to prevent checkmate on g7 and attack the white queen. Let's take a look at another example. In this position, white decides to capture the knight on g6. Black does not want to allow white to win a piece for free, so black should recapture the bishop. Does it matter which way black recaptures the bishop? In this case, one capture loses the game instantly, and the other move keeps the game going. Let's take a look at h takes g6. This move looks okay, but notice it opens up the h file and black is in big trouble. There are two pieces of whites, the queen and the rook, lined up on the h-file, and now that the h-file is wide open, checkmate is delivered on the very next turn. Let's take a look at the other capture and see if that would have been better. Black could have played f takes g6. Notice this doesn't open up any lines of attack against the black king, and also black's knight is protecting the pawn on h7, so the queen should not capture that pawn. Let's take a look at one more example together. In this position, black is threatening checkmate on the very next move with queen takes h2. How can white prevent this checkmate? Well, white could capture the knight with the queen, but that would result in white losing a queen for a knight. Not a good trade. In general, it is important to keep your pawns directly in front of the king, but sometimes you have to move a pawn forward in order to keep your king safe. In this case, the best move is to play h3. This blocks the queen and knight's attack on the h2 square, and it threatens to capture the knight. Now that you've learned the importance of king safety, it's your turn to practice keeping your king safe. White is in a very bad position, currently down several pawns and two minor pieces. Let's make the best out of the bad situation and at least capture an unprotected black pawn. <laughs> Great job. White captured a pawn and black quickly played knight to d8 attacking the rook and revealing the bishop's attack on the queen. Can you find a winning move that black overlooked? Shkollish, shkollish, gizmus. Um, what? Excellent job. I forgot about king safety. Rule number one. Well, protect 
King safety. Spoo hack. Yes. <laughs> White has a powerful position. Let's move our knight directly into the center. <sighs> Great work. <laughs> Black attacks White's queen, but Black's king is stranded in the center. Can you find the best move for White? I'm going to say Castle Munde, you know. Nice try, but White's move that immediately wins the next move. Huh? 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 What does he want? To defend the best move. Oh. Uh, so you could do that, but then it's going to get attacked by that. Well, you, move this here. you can move that there. Excellent. Exactly. Black overlooks checkmate. Oh, that's checkmate. Amazing. That's what that's what we love about chess. Checkmates. White's rook that was on a one just captured a pawn on a five, leaving the back rank wide open with black to move. Let's take advantage of that unsafe key. That's what I'm talking about. No, no. <laughs> He's saying there. Why, why are you using that? Oh, do we have to use a rook? White's rook something. I'm going to say there. Excellent job. White's king is forced off the back rank. Can you find black's best move? Black. No, apparently not that one. Uh, do we have another thing going on here? Is it fire? Are we stacking? Is that what's happening? Are we stacking? If we go there, can we get it there? If we go there, you say? Yeah. Hmm. That does force him around. I'm going to listen to you. Preferring checkmate in one. Yeah, checkmate in one. Yeah, checkmate in one. Because you're attacking and defending. Where would king be able to move now? There. And then you can... No, it can't move there. Move. No, it can't. It can't move there. No, it can't. It cannot move. It can move up. No, it can't move up. It can't move anywhere. I think it's checkmate. I can't go here. It's bishop. Uh. Nice. White's king is very weak, and black's queen is ready to deliver checkmate on g2 on the next move. Can you find a way to save the game for white? Yes. No. Oh, because it's literally about to win. Uh, by checking? I'm checking in. I don't know. Like, you could use the queen. I was thinking of checkmating. I mean, checking. Yeah, you do check. Excellent job. White checks Black's king, allowing the white queen to save the game. How can white's queen prevent a checkmate? By moving down, you say. Great defensive play. White's queen prevents checkmate just in time to save the game. So, like, next time, you'd have to, you'd trade, you'd just be trading queens. What happens if, if you were to move it across? It would have to move up. It would just take you. If you move there. Yeah. It could just check me. Like right. It's sort of it doesn't have to take you. Yeah. Black's queen is threatening to checkmate white on h2. Should white defend the h2 pawn? Or can you find a way to take advantage of black's weak king? You can just... No, 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 that guy's there. 
You could go there. Great job. White attacks Black's King and forces it into the corner. Can you find a forced checkmate in two moves for White? No. No. One, two. Mm. So I can just get you back. No, you can. You're going to sacrifice it and then you just got to take that. I do those things so often, but it doesn't turn out like that. There's a thing that I've over overlooked and I don't get the checkmate, but I just lose like my queen or something. Because you think you've got it. Yeah. It's like I sacrifice the queen like for like, you know, something else, maybe their queen. But then it's not a checkmate, and I just lose. Check because you should. Check because you must. But never check because you can. It's tempting to deliver a check and attack your opponent's king, but you only want to do this when the check clearly makes your opponent's position worse or improves your own position. In this position, black's king is safely castled, and white is prepared to castle on the next turn. Does it make sense to check the white king? Absolutely. After rook e8 check, black's rook is now on an active, open file, attacking white's king. In order to not lose material, white's king must move. After king f1, white's king has lost the right to castle, so not only is the king poorly placed, notice that white's rook on h1 will have trouble getting into the game. In this case, the check improved black's position and made the opponent's position worse. Let's take a look at some examples when you shouldn't just check, because you can. The opening phase of a chess game is all about controlling the center, developing your pieces quickly, and bringing your king to safety. With black to move, is it a good idea to check the white king with queen a5? Black should focus on continuing to develop pieces toward the center and preparing to castle the king, but after queen a5 check, Black attacks white's king with the powerful queen, but now white can combine attack and defense with bishop d2. Black's check has only helped white continue to bring pieces into the game, and since black's queen is so valuable, black will be forced to waste time retreating the queen now that it is attacked by the bishop. In the last example, black's careless check lost time and allowed the opponent to gain a lead in development. Not a good thing, but also not the end of the world. In this position, a check will be disastrous. White has just played e5, attacking black's knight. Black should move the knight to safety, but when you are attacked, it is tempting to counterattack your opponent. Black can check white's king with bishop b4. Is this a good idea? After bishop b4 check, if white blocks the check with a piece, such as the knight or the bishop, Black can trade the bishop for that piece and will be just fine. Can you find a stronger way to block the check for white? If you found c3, great job. White blocks the check and attacks the bishop with a pawn, so both black's knight and bishop are attacked by pawns, which means black is going to lose a piece. As we can see, playing a check without a clear plan can make a difficult situation much worse. Let's take a look at one more example together. In this position, white's bishop on d3 and queen on c2 are lined up and pointing at the h7 square. White can check black's king with bishop h7. Is this a good idea? Remember, only check your opponent if it makes their position worse or your position better. White should simply continue to develop with knight f3, bringing the knight closer to the center and opening up the diagonal for the bishop on c1. Instead, after bishop h7 check, Black's king is forced to the corner with king h8. Although black's king was forced to move, how can white continue with the attack? White doesn't have any pieces to add pressure to black's king, and notice that the bishop that delivered the check is out of play and only has one escape route. If white isn't careful, this bishop might get trapped by a future g6 move, disconnecting the bishop from the queen. Now that you've learned the importance of only checking when you have a good reason, let's check your knowledge in the challenges.
Why just push the E pawn attacking Black's knight on F6? Instead of moving the knight, Black decides to deliver a check. How can you block the check and win material for white? Over to you, sir. White just pushed the E pawn. We just pushed the E pawn. That's what we did. Attacking Black's knight on f6. Instead of moving the knight, say back or forward, Black decides to deliver a check. How can you block the check and win material? Incorrect. <laughs> Great job. Black retrieves the queen and attacks the b2 pawn. Let's capture the good knight on f6. Great job, we have one material. But now, black is trying to win our rook on a1. Can you find the powerful move that attacks black's queen and protects the rook on a1? Can you, huh, 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 can you, huh? Shh, you do, shh. Fantastic job, finding the powerful move, black's queen. He's up to attack. And White's Bishop protects the rook on a1. If Black tries to capture it, keep up the great work. Black to move. White just played the weak move. Queen takes e2. Oh, no. e2 checkmate. Sorry, that's what the plus means. Uh, how can we best respond to White's check and continue our development? Like this. Like this. Like this. It's not right. Like this. Excellent decision. We're ready to castle to safety. White is threatening. Bishop takes f6. To take advantage of our e pinned bishop, how do we move our king to safety and unpin the bishop? Great decision. After castling, we are ready to play rook to e8. Huh? Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then take the e file. The trouble is worth it. White boldly delivers a check. Was this a good decision? Find Black's best response. White boldly delivers a check with the queen on the king. Oops. Uh, great vision. Instead of focusing on developing, White carelessly check lost a queen. Can't be treating the old queens like this. Mm -mm -mm. White has four checks in the position, but only one check is a good move. Can you find that check? So we have the queen to check, we have the hook to check, we have something else to check. Uh, we could also check the queen here. We could check, check, check the queen. That's a good use the rook and or move. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this fork is the best one. Great powerful check, it's not only attacks the black's king, but it also attacks both of black's unprotected bishops. Play white's strongest move. It's probably safer to attack this bishop than it is to go up into here. No. Oh, because he's attacking my... That because that one's not actually attacking anything. Yeah. 
This is why I lose, because I <laughs> do that. A check can be a powerful move if you have a good reason. Black bishop on d6 and knight are forked by white's pawn. Can you find a way to avoid losing material for black? Oh, black bishop is forked. Uh, and the knight by the pawn. Can you find a way to avoid losing material for black? That's a great, great question. Can I? I don't know. Can I? You know what? Great job. Black checks the king with one of the pieces under attack. What is the best square for our attacked knight? Uh, we have three squares. Generally, we don't like to move our knight out to the edge of the board, so here we lose a piece gigantic. All right. Nerd. It's not saying there or there, is it? What? Why is it there? Protecting the thing. Oh, because it's protected by the thing. Excellent move. You knew what you were doing. Good, good work. You... you Pressure uh, pins sees. Sometimes in chess, you will get lucky and your opponent will give up an easy checkmate. But that's not always the case. It's usually harder than that, and you'll need to look deeper into the position in order to win. You might have checkmate, but it's in two moves instead of one. This might be called mate in two. Let's take a look at some examples where there is a forced checkmate in two moves. In any position, it's important to first look at all of the checks. With white to move, does white have any checks in this position? White only has one, but it happens to be a good one. Knight to e7 check. This move forces the king to the open h-file, either h8 or h7. Let's say king h7. Notice that the white knight protects g8 and g6, meaning that the black king cannot escape the h-file. If white's queen can deliver a check on the h-file, it's checkmate. Can you find the move? Queen h5, checkmate. Since the queen and knight guard all of the escape squares for the black king, you just found a two-move checkmate. Great job. Let's look at another example. In this position, black is threatening checkmate on the very next move, with queen takes g2, checkmate. Notice black has two attackers, the rook and queen, versus white's only defender, the lone king on h1. Now before worrying about the checkmate, first look to see if white has any attacks to consider. Notice that the white queen and bishop line up on f7. There's only one defender, the king on g8. Which check would force the black king into the corner? Queen takes f7, delivers check, protected by the bishop, so the king cannot take the queen, and this forces the king into the corner with h8. Now white has three ways to deliver checkmate on the next move. Queen e8, queen f8, or, working together with the light squared bishop, queen to g8, checkmate. The king cannot capture the queen because the light squared bishop protects the queen. Let's take a look at one more example together. In this position, white has two checks, queen f7 and queen h7. Notice queen f7 isn't a very good move. White has two attackers on f7, black has two defenders. Also, white would just lose the queen after bishop takes f7. So that move does not look very good. What about queen takes h7? White has two pieces attacking h7, and black has only one protector, the lone king. After queen h7 check, the king is going to be forced to f8. Do you see the two-move checkmate coming? After king f8, 
If you found Queen H8, checkmate, great job. Now that you've seen some examples, it's your turn to practice delivering two move checkmates. I am ready, maybe. In this seemingly quiet position, White can unleash a two move checkmate. Can you find it? The horsey. The horsey. You want the horsey? Great move. Now, deliver the checkmate. Great job. Black is threatening Queen to G2 checkmate on the next move. Things look hopeless. Can you find two checks in a row for white that force are checkmate? Can you? Huh? Punk? Don't you? Black's king is in serious danger. Is it? Yes. It's about to get rickrolled. And white's king looks safe. Hiding like a wimp. Can you find a two checkmate checkmate to checkmate the checks? Um... Who are we're black? I only take the pawn with the castle and then he has to move it. He has to take you. And then and then you're saying this. Maybe not. This is what you're saying. Thought. Absolutely. Black rips open the H file with a checkmate. You got it, dude. Can't move back, can't move back, can't move back. Move back, can't move back, can't move back. White's king is trapped in the corner. Sure is. Can you find a two move checkmate that wins the game for black? I'm thinking this boy down here. Down here. Incorrect. Horsey. Where would you move the horsey? He's just going to get token. No, it's pinned. No, yeah. don't worry about it. What? There. 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 It's not checkmate, though. We have to put the bad boy in checkmate. In one move. You get two moves. Oh, you did it. Terrific. After this forced trade with queens. Black pawn delivers a checkmate. Finish the game for white. A beautiful checkmate. Great job. All of Black's pieces are aiming at white's king's side, ready to rip open lines to attack. Can you find a forced to move checkmate in just time for white? Can you? Huh? Huh? Can you? Huh? 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 Can you? Um, move your love. Are we white? We're white. Mm -hmm. We're white to move. We probably want to checkmate the checkers in the check and checks. What do we? I'm looking at the queen and the bish. The bish bish. The bish bish. The rook rook. Um, but the question is, do we move bishop up first? He takes that. Life is sad and sour. Or do we move this up? Not a checkmate. Great move though. White threatened to threaten, but... Unfortunately, no one cares. What? 
The opening phase is all about controlling the center and developing your pieces with a plan. Every move you make should be doing one of those two things. The middle game will then arise out of the opening. Many beginning chess players are fascinated with the opening because of the many exciting traps, gambits, and names. But in reality, you're better off not spending time memorizing openings, but instead understanding opening principles and then practicing your middle game and end game. That said, openings are fun, and it's great to learn a few because they teach you how to understand how to think about the first moves of your game. Let's take a look at some of White's most popular openings after e4. After e4, Black's most solid and straightforward response is e5. And after the typical knight f3 and knight c6, we are going to study three of White's most popular opening choices. The first opening begins with the move bishop to c4. This is known as the Italian game, or gioco piano, the quiet game. It is one of the most classical openings in chess. White develops the bishop to an open diagonal, placing pressure on black's weak square on f7. White is ready to castle and bring the other pieces toward the center. Black often responds with bishop to c5. Using the same ideas as white, this opening isn't as fast-paced as other openings that we'll study, but it is a solid way to develop your pieces to good squares and prepare for the middle game. After bishop to b5, this opening is known as the Rui Lopez. It is considered more aggressive than the Italian game because white continues the attack on the e5 pawn by putting pressure on its defender, the knight on c6. Black's most popular option is the strange-looking a6. Provoking white to capture the knight. Isn't that exactly what white wants to do? It turns out that white cannot win the pawn on e5 right away, so black attacks white's bishop. If white tries to win the pawn with bishop takes c6, black recaptures with the d-pawn, clearing open the diagonal for the light-squared bishop and also opening the d-file for black's queen. After knight takes e5, black has the powerful move queen to d4. Black moves the queen to d4, creating a double attack on the knight on e5 and pawn on e4. After white brings the knight to safety with knight f3, black plays queen takes e4 check. Black now regains the pawn with a good game. Since taking black's knight does not win a pawn, White usually plays bishop a4, keeping the pressure on the knight on c6, and if black attacks the bishop again with b5, white plays bishop to b3, entering the active a2 to g8 diagonal, focusing on the weak f7 square. The last of the three common white openings begins after d4. White advances a second pawn into the center, placing pressure on black's e5 pawn and opening up lines for the queen and dark-squared bishop. This opening is known as the scotch opening. It is an aggressive opening that puts pressure on black's center right from the beginning of the game. Black should capture the pawn immediately with e takes d4, but sometimes black plays d6. This move allows white to open up the d-file with d takes e5. If black captures with the knight first with knight takes e5, White opens up the d-file after knight takes e5, d takes e5, and now that the d-file is open, white can trade queens with queen takes d8 check. After king takes d8, black's king loses the right to castle and is stuck in the middle of the board. After d takes e5, the d-file has once again opened and white trades queens with queen takes d8 check. Black has a tough choice to make. Black can either capture the queen with knight takes d8, giving up protection of the pawn on e5 and losing it after knight takes e5, or black can play king takes d8, losing the right to castle. Black's king is stuck in the middle of the board and will become a target of attack on the open d-file. This is why black should play e takes d4. And after white plays knight takes d4, both sides have a file that has been opened, the d-file for white and the e-file for black. This means the game may open up quickly where both sides will have attacking chances. 
after bishop to c5, black develops a piece and adds a second attacker on white's knight on d4. White plays bishop to e3, developing the bishop toward the center and adding a second defender to the d4 knight. Both sides will focus on completing development, castling, and will prepare for a sharp middle game fight. Now that you've learned some of white's most popular openings after e4, let's test your knowledge in the challenges. <laughs> Let's play a game started by going to e4. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Excellent. How can we develop a knight towards the center of a blacking, blacking black? Excellent. You got it. Let's turn this game into an Italian game. Great job, White's bishop controls an excellent diagonal with the white ready the castle. After three, B, C, four, the opening is known as the Italian game. Is that telling me to... Oh, okay, next. Thank you. Uh, let's play bishop B5, attacking black's knight on C6, which brings the Rui Loch Pears. Excellent job, White has turned the game into a game with the games. We do that, we do that, we do that. Dorsey. Now you're on the weak pawn. Mmm. 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 No. Let's capture Black's Knight and understand why this doesn't win the pawn for White. White craves the bishop for the thing and the thing for the thing and then you get the thing. Capturing the thing. Get wrecked. Let's explore the aggressive scotch opening by playing d4. Amazing. Now what are we doing? How can we develop a bishop and attack the unprotected f7? Let's open up the game with a d4 and a scotch opening. Let's do it. Bring it on. Oh, sorry. Perfect. Plural perfect. When white doesn't play e4, the most popular alternative is d4. Notice d4 controls the center and also opens up lines for the queen and dark squared bishop. Opening with the queen pawn is usually a slower, more positional opening compared to the e4 openings because it takes longer to develop the kingside pieces. White is now ready to play e4, creating a powerful center, so black normally plays d5, gaining space in the center and preventing white from placing a second pawn in the center. Let's take a look at one of the most fundamental d4 openings. White's most popular move is c4, immediately attacking the d5 pawn. This is known as the queen's gambit. The term gambit means sacrificing a pawn or more material in order to gain an attack or some other advantage. The name queen's gambit is confusing because after d takes c4, known as the queen's gambit accepted, White can gain the pawn back immediately with queen to a4 check, checking black's king and threatening the c4 pawn all at the same time. White does not have to worry about regaining the pawn and can play e4. Taking over the center and opening up the f1's bishop attack on the c4 pawn. Since white is able to get two pawns in the center and develop quickly, black does not want to fall further behind in development and try to hold on to this pawn. Since taking the pawn on c4 and trying to keep it is risky, black usually defends the d5 pawn with either c6, known as the Slav defense, or e6. This opening is known as the queen's gambit decline. 
white will continue to develop pieces to add pressure on d5, and black will continue to defend this important square. After knight to c3, white develops a knight and places more pressure on black center, black plays knight f6, developing the knight and protecting the center, white plays bishop to g5, pinning the knight on f6 that was protecting the d5 square, and black plays bishop to e7, developing a piece and unpinning the knight on f6. Black is ready to castle, and white will focus on completing development on the king side and castling as well. Are you ready to test your d4 opening knowledge? Let's do it. Let's do it. Hi ya hi Oh okay. Let's play White's most popular alternative to E4 with D4. Great job. Let's play a poor move controlling the center. Let's play another pawn directly in the center. Exactly. If your opponent allows it, place both pawns in the center. After the much stronger defense, d5, let's attack the pawn with the white's c pawn entering the queen's gambit. You've got it. He accepts the gambit. It's running away. e4 square is open. Let's bring another white pawn into the center. Oh, sorry. Great job. White takes over the center and opens up the light squared bishop ready to capture the black c4 pawn with a great position. Black decides not to protect the d5 pawn with another pawn. Let's capture the d5 pawn. Nice job. White removes black's central pawn. Let's develop a knight and attack black's queen. Great work. White's knight attacks the queen, forcing black to lose time by retreating it. How can white bring another pawn directly into the center? Fantastic, black failed the protect of the d5 pawn, and now white has taken over the center. Let's play queen's gambit again by playing c4. Oh, he's done it. Ladies and gentlemen. Declined. Let's develop a knight towards the center to add attacker on d5. You got it. White develops a piece and adds more pressure to d5. Black defends d5 by developing a knight. How can white pin the f5 knight to the queen and develop another piece? Um, what are we doing? How can white pin the f6 knight? That's it. Look at that. That's it. Hectic looking board. <laughs> white needs to start developing the king side. How can white move a pawn to protect d4 and open up the light squared bishop? Who are we, white? Um, what are we doing? Amazing. Great job. White protects the d4 pawn and opens up the light squared bishop. After the black attacks, the development of the castle develops the white knight. Other knight tries to send a knight. And the night night. <laughs> uh, what is happening? After black castles, let's develop white's other knight towards the center. Next. While white gets to make the first move in chess, black can also decide the direction of the opening by choosing an opening to fight for the center and put their pieces on good squares. Even though black moves second and is essentially a half step behind white, with good play, black can hope to equalize in the middle game or even gain the advantage. Let's take a look at some key openings for black. After e4, the first two openings we will look at for black focus on preventing white from easily placing another pawn in the center with d4. The most solid of these options is e5, gaining a fair share of space in the center for black and preparing to capture white's pawn if it moves to d4. After the typical knight f3, 
Black has a few reasonable moves in this position. The most common is knight c6. Before looking at this move, let's consider some other options. One option is to play d6. This is known as the Philidor defense. The Philidor is a solid but passive opening. It is considered passive because d6 blocks Black's dark squared bishop from developing toward the center, so the bishop will not control many squares in the opponent's camp early in the game. For this reason, White often plays d4, gaining more space in the center and threatening Black's pawn on e5. After e takes d4, knight takes d4, Black would like to play bishop to c5 to put pressure on the knight on d4. Notice the pawn on d6 blocks the bishop from becoming active. Black will have less space to use for development, so Black's position will be solid enough, but passive. Another opening choice for Black is to play knight f6. This is known as the Petrov, or Russian, defense. Black counterattacks the e4 pawn instead of protecting e5. After knight takes e5, it's very important for Black to play d6. If instead, Black plays knight takes e4, Black is in serious trouble after queen e2. White attacks the knight with the queen. If Black tries to defend the knight, say with d5, White will simply attack the knight with d3 and force it to move. If the knight moves right away, say knight f6, White can win Black's queen with the nice tactic knight to c6. Discovering the queen's check on the king, and also notice the knight threatens to take the queen. Black is going to lose a queen in this position. This is why it is important for Black to immediately play d6, attacking White's knight, and after the knight retreats to f3, now Black can play knight takes e4. Black plans on playing d5, developing the dark squared bishop, and castling. Notice if White tries to cause the same issues with queen e2, Black can simply play queen e7, unpinning the knight so the knight can safely retreat without losing any material. Let's return to the position after knight to c6. This is Black's most popular option, protecting the e5 pawn and developing a piece toward the center. After bishop to c4, the Italian game, Black has two main options, bishop to c5 or knight to f6. After knight to f6, White is able to play the aggressive and very dangerous move knight to g5, joining the bishop's attack on f7. As you are starting out, it's best to avoid these complications where one misstep can lose the game for black. This is why we recommend bishop to c5. Notice that knight g5 is not possible in this position because the queen on d8 protects the g5 square. And after castles, in knight f6, black is ready to castle on the next move with a solid position. The other popular opening to put pressure on d4 is the move c5. This is known as the Sicilian defense. Black does not worry about putting a pawn directly in the center to control equal space, but wants to set up an imbalance in the pawn structure right from move 1. White typically plays knight to f3. And after knight to c6, white usually opens up lines with d4. This is known as the open Sicilian. Black does not allow white to keep two pawns in the center and plays c takes d4. Black captures a center pawn, d4, with a wing pawn, c5. A wing pawn is a pawn that is not on the central d or e files. So after knight takes d4, Notice that black has two pawns that could move into the center, e7 and d7, while white only has one pawn, e4. Having two pawns that can move into the center can be an advantage for black, but notice that black is behind in development since black has not made any moves to help develop the king side. This means that white will usually get to develop pieces to more active squares faster than black can, so white often gets an early attack. The Sicilian is a fighting opening where both sides often get to attack each other in tactically sharp positions. After exploring Black's most common defenses to e4, let's go to the challenges.
black to move. Move black's e pawn directly into the center and gain an equal amount of space. Excellent work. Black grabs a fair share of space. White tries to take over the center with d4. Capture that pawn. Nice work. Black captures white's d4 pawn, luring white's queen into the center. Develop a knight and attack white's queen. Yeesh. You got it, dude. White is attacking black's pawn on e5. How can black develop a knight and counterattack e4 pawn? You, the Russian defense. The or as known as the Petrog or Russian defense. White captures black's pawn. Should black play d6, attacking white's knight, or capture the e4 pawn immediately? Excellent. Forces the white knight to retreat. Now, let's capture that e4 pawn. Nicely done. White now pins black's knight to the king and removes... Uh, how can you move a piece that protects the knight and removes the pin. I forget. Bishop? Incorrect. This? Protect the knight. Incorrect. Da 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 da! Great move. Black protects the knight and removes the pin, allowing the knight to move on the next turn. White just played B, bishop to c4. Entering the Italian opening. Let's develop the dark squared bishop towards the center to add pressure to the whites. Ah, oh, in c. Yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent. Black develops a bishop to c5, pointing to the weak to f2 pawn. White plays the weak but dangerous knight to g5. Can you find black's best move to win material? Ooh. Wonderful. Black captures white's knight, simply winning a piece. White has already castled, so black needs to focus on king safety. Develop black's knight towards the center and prepare to castle. Prepare to castle. Excellent job. Black developed the knight, attacking e4. Now bring black's king to safety by castling. Great job. Let's play the Sicilian defense by moving black c4 pawn to c5. Yes, daddy. You got it. <laughs> uh, white tries to completely take over the center. Let's trade. Excellent. You're ready to take the next lesson. Intro to e4 defenses for black. Oh my skadoosh. Ooh. 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 Oh. Ah. Oh. Um. If black does not play e5 or c5, black usually opens with a plan to attack the e4 pawn. One direct way of doing this is with d5. This is known as the Scandinavian defense. Black immediately attacks the e4 pawn, but moving the d-pawn this early has the drawback that it is only protected by the queen. So after e takes d5, black brings the queen out very early to recapture the pawn with queen takes d5. White can play knight to c3, developing a piece toward the center and attacking black's queen. Black loses time moving the queen to safety, so bringing the queen out early in the opening is usually not a great idea. If black wants to prepare an attack on e4 with d5, it is more common to prepare it with e6 or c6 first. After e6, this opening is known as the French defense. Black prepares to play d5 on the very next turn. After d4, white enjoys having two pawns in the center 
but black quickly attacks white's center with d5. If white captures black's pawn on d5, black is ready to recapture with the e6 pawn. Since the trade doesn't improve white's position, a more common move for white is to play e5. Moving the pawn to safety and taking space in black's territory. The drawback of playing e6 is that it blocks in the light squared bishop on c8, so finding a good place for that bishop is black's biggest challenge. In the French, black allows white a central space advantage and then counterattacks the center with c5. The opening battle will focus on white trying to keep a space advantage and black trying to attack and destroy it. A similar opening to the French defense is played after c6. This is known as the Karo Khan defense. After d4, like the French defense, black attacks the center in the Karo Khan with d5. After the common e5, black plays bishop to f5. Unlike the French defense, in the Karo Khan, black develops the light squared bishop toward the center before playing e6. Black enjoys a solid game, but it is a slower opening strategy as black has not made any moves to help with kingside development. Now that you've learned the ideas behind attacking the e4 pawn in the French and Karakhan defenses, let's put your knowledge to the test. Let's play a5, known as the Scandinavian defense. Scandinavian defense immediately attacks the e4 pawn, but allows the white to capture d5. Since black can't recapture the pawn, let's capture the d5 with our queen. White develops a knight towards center, we move back. Let's prepare to move d5 by playing e6, the French defense. Uh. Let's counter punch with a French again by playing d5. Great job. Now let's now advance to e5, gaining a space advantage. How can black fight the fight? Excellent. Oh, whoops. Let's try the other solid way of attacking. Uh, whoops. <laughs> nice. Great job. White advances the pawn to e5 and grabs space. Unlike the French defense, let's develop the light squared bishop towards the center. Excellent. After your opponent plays d4, white's most popular alternative to e4, how should you respond? Black's most common strategy is to prevent white from comfortably playing e4. Sometimes black plays knight to f6, but the most straightforward way to prevent e4 is by playing d5, gaining equal space in the center and protecting the e4 square. After c4, White plays the queen's gambit, trying to get black to capture the wing pawn with d takes c4 so white can take over the center with e4. Although black can capture the c4 pawn, giving up control of the center is usually not a great plan. The most reliable defenses for black is to protect the d5 pawn with e6 or c6. A common error for black is to play knight f6. Although this move protects the d5 pawn, after c takes d5 and knight takes d5, black no longer has control over e4, so white can play e4, taking over the center and forcing black to lose time by retreating the knight. This is why it's important to protect black's central pawn with another pawn. Black's most common defense is with e6, known as the queen's gambit decline. If white captures the d5 pawn, black is ready to recapture with a pawn keeping good control of the center. White usually continues to develop and put more pressure on d5 with knight to c3. 
black develops and protects the center with knight to f6, and after bishop to g5, pinning black's central defender, black quickly unpins the knight with bishop to e7. In the queen's gambit declined, black will have a solid position, but black's bishop on c8 may take some time to find an active square. Black will castle on the next turn, and then focus on developing the queenside. If black does not want to block in the light-squared bishop like the queen's gambit declined, then black can play the move c6. This is known as the Slav defense. Black is hoping to develop the light-squared bishop before playing e6. The Slav defense, just like the queen's gambit declined, is a solid opening that tries to control space, develop pieces toward the center, and castle. Are you ready to defend against d4? Let's see. I'm preparing tea. Just hold your farm. Hold it. Yes. Uh, uh, why is threatening a4? Let's take control of the center and prevent that move. Skidoo. Excellent job. Black gains a space at the center, controls by a4 square. White just played c4, trying to remove our important central pawn. How should black defend the center? Excellent job. White now captures the d4 pawn, holding take control of the center. How could black recapture that pawn? You got it, dude. Black puts a pawn back into the center with a solid game. <laughs> Let's play the queen's game at declined. Again with e6. Great job. White develops a knight and adds another attacker to the d5 pawn. Let's develop a knight and add a defender to the d5. Nope, no, yes, no, maybe. Yes, no, maybe. Can you repeat the. D. We're protecting d5. We'll do this one. Yes. Solid position. Let's defend our d5 pawn with knight to f6. Knight to f6. Oh. Oh. How can we develop a bishop to unpin the f6 knight? You. Well done. Black about the bishop unpinning the black's knight of queen. If black doesn't want to play the queen's game, it declined. Another solid defense is the Slav defense. Shh. It's not that one. Uh, is it this one or this one? Can't remember. Hey. 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 While knights are most useful when they are close to the action, bishops are usually best placed on long diagonals where they can control squares from a distance. In this position, the bishop is putting pressure on the a8 square no matter if it's on b7, c6, or g2. So in general, it's better to keep them safe while still attacking key squares. Let's take a look at some examples. One thing to be careful of is that bishops can also be vulnerable to pawn attacks that can push them around. Watch how white traps the black bishop. The bishop has no escape. Bishops work really well together when used as a pair. Together, they can cover a lot of squares and make up for the fact that each bishop only attacks one color. Look at all the squares these bishops control together in black's territory. Bishops also pair nicely with the queen, who often goes in for the attack while protected from the bishop from behind. Let's take a look at this attack with the queen and see how both bishops work together to help checkmate the black king. The queen checks the king on h8 and delivers checkmate. Notice the dark square bishop joins the battle and prevents the king from escaping. It's game over. 
One good question to always ask yourself is which diagonal would the bishop be most effective on? Let's see if you can answer that in the questions. What if I can't? What if I'm just not good enough? Well, it has two attackers on bishops, central d5 pawn, and black has two defenders. How can white's bishop join the game and help add pressure to black's d5 pawn? Great question. D5 pawn. Pressure. Pressure. Didn't, didn't mean to make you cry. <laughs> Black has three connected past pawns marching forward. Black's C pawn is ready to promote to the next move. Can you find a way to save the game for white? Uh, it's not that. White's defenses are overwhelmed by black. We'll promote on the next move. Try again. You piece of trash. That one? White is threatening to capture a pawn and fork black's rooks. Can you find the best defense? White is threatening to fork me in the rook. Can you find the best defense? The double rook fork daddy can find the best defense. I'm going to assume it's with a bishop. Considering we are using our bishops. Bring the bishop. Bring the bishop back down. Ah, uh, Bujan. A resourceful bishop move. Nicely done. <laughs> oh, yes. A resourceful bishop move, declining the fork in the rook. Black's two rooks are ready to outpower white's bishops. Can you combine the strength of the bishops to force a checkmate in two moves? Yes. Yes, I can. Bishop rolled. She got bishoped. Excellent. Black's king is forced into the corner, delivering checkmate. Oh, that's oh, that's checked there, isn't it, mate? White's bishop on d3 is miserable. It's blocked in every direction. What is the best way to make this passive piece active? It's like chess therapy. Uh, d3, passive active by powerful move there white attacked the knight and opened up several squares for the bishop how can you use the liberated light squared bishop to win material shadown it's, it's an interesting little maneuver because you just lose it. So that's a fine trade. That is a fine trade. There fine are few indeed. things as satisfying in chess as making a good move with the knight. Maybe it's because it's the only piece that can jump. Or maybe it's because with each new square the knight lands on, there are now eight new squares of possibilities to consider. The knight is so full of potential, if you use it correctly, that is. In order to make the most of your knights, you will need to put them on squares where they have the most possibilities. Let's see what happens when you put a knight into the corner. How many squares can it move to? Right, only two squares. Now let's see the knight on the side of the board. How many squares now? That's right, 
only four. And how many squares can the knight move to now that we've placed the piece in its favorite place, directly in the center? That's right, eight. The knight loves being in the center of the board where it can leap into action anywhere. And if you really are looking to maximize the knight, place the knight on the sixth rank where it not only controls the center, but it also is eyeing the valuable pieces that are often found on the eighth rank, like the king. Look at how dangerous this knight is. Knights also work really well when used together with the queen. Together, they cover all of the potential black king moves. Just look at this checkmating duo. One final point about the knight is this. The knight is usually the best blockader of an advanced enemy pawn. Rooks hate getting stuck in front of pawns, and bishops aren't that much better, but knights feel right at home blocking pawns. Now it's your turn to see if you know how to activate your knights. Lettuce. Leaf. White has one more minor piece to develop. Where is white's knight on b1 best placed? Great move. White's knight on a3 isn't happy sitting away from the action. How can you activate this knight and create the threat? Oh. White's knight would love to plant itself into some sweet f6 action. Forking black's major pieces and king can just get real dirty. <laughs> How can the knight reach the f6 square in two moves? Whew. Not like that. Not like that. Where do we want to go? Where do you want to get there? You got it. Dude. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Black's bishop and rooks want to become more active once the e6 pawn moves. What is white's best move in this position? I'm going to say it's something to do with this guy. Going here or here or here. Or here. Have you seen that one? You've got two pawns to go against, right? Here? Yeah. Here? Yeah. White's knight is kicked out of the center and black's light squared bishop is free. Try again. Your potential skills are improving. <laughs> Not even willing to like... You have your skills are being improved. Potentially. Potential skills. You don't have any. <laughs> it's because they know I keep failing. And a blockade for f6 pawn, preventing it from moving. Where is he actually? Where is that? Black is ready to play d2 and promote the pawn. How can white best defend against this dangerous pawn? By doing this. Ooh. Rooks are the second most powerful pieces in chess, if you use them right, that is. At the beginning of the game, the rooks are on the most useless squares. But once you get to the right spot, the rooks are very useful. One place rooks like to be is on open files. An open file is one where there are no pawns at all. On an open file, a rook can see all the way across the board. Even more powerful is having two rooks on the open file. Notice with both of white's rooks on the open e-file, black's rooks are no match to fight against them on the e-file. Another good place for a rook is on a semi-open file. A semi-open file 
is where there are only pawns from one army on that file. This might mean that your rook is attacking your opponent's pawn, like this. Or, the rook is protecting your own pawn, which you are probably trying to push. Finally, the best place for a rook is on the seventh rank. Here it attacks your opponent's pawns and also cuts off the opponent's king. When you get two rooks together on the seventh rank, they are so unstoppable they have earned the nickname Pigs on the Seventh. Let's see if you can put your rooks on their best squares. Pigs on the seventh. We don't even have two rooks. Let's activate the white's rook and prepare to attack black's only unprotected pawn. What? Out. Excellent. White's rook moves to an open file. Now prepare for the attack of the black's weak C secret pawn. You are correct. Uh, um, A6. What the sh. What the sh. Shiza Minelli? Where are we going? Can you find a plan now to attack Black's A6? No. I cannot. Um... Uh, uh. Gosh, my Scheisman Ellie's. Great work activating the rook and targeting weaknesses. Yeah, that's what happened. The rooks are battling over white's C pawn. How can white attack the black rook and advance the past pawn? Pigs on a blanket? Incorrect. And not lining up with it. Incorrect. I don't know. White's C pawn. Looking at that pawn. How can white attack a black rook and advance the past pawn? I've already done that. Already done that. I don't really know. Move it across. Move it across. Move it all the way across. No, you can that one next to you. Which pawn move can attack the black's rook? Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Black's rook tries to block the promoted square, and. But now, white can eliminate the rook on c8. Play the move. Could get there and get him in the promotion at the same time. <laughs> Black just played queen to e7. Attacking white's pawn on e4. Let's set up a trap by castling. Black falls into the trap. Thank you, white, for God about the pawn. Now the e file is open. How can you find a way to win black's queen? Oh, dude, it's so pinned. That's pin daddy. It's amazing.
Flex Queen and Past Pawn look very dangerous, but White's Rook can work together with, to win Black's Queen. Can you find the forcing moves to, to make this happen? Yes. Yes. You got it. Now that Black King is forced to the same. Oh, in Daddy. Oh. Black has a dangerous past pawn on d2 that white cannot prevent from promoting. Things look bad, but can you find a clever way to win black's pawn once he promotes to d1? Am I white? Mm -hmm. Can I find a clever way? No. Oh, no. I'm just going to My my thought is that, but it just it takes me then. My other thought is that, but then that just takes me then. What if you get under, like all the way under it? Then it takes you there because it can't move backwards. There. But then what does that do? Takes the pawn. Oh. <gasps> no. No. Move down then. No. No. Clever way. Oh, takes the king. No. No. Oh, I'm white. Yeah. No. I'm gonna need a hint, Daddy. Black's king and past pawn are ling lined up on the D file. Where can white's rook safely deliver a check on that file? I can only enter that file through one move. And I've tried that. Check on the D file. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Have you tried every single move yet? Where can White's Rook safely deliver a check on that file? On the D file? Can't. Beautiful move. Black cannot stop white from checking on the... Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. So once you move up there, right? Yeah. He does that. But then it's your move. So you get to skewer. Then it's a clever move. And then he has to move out of the way. He can't move there because of that. He has to move out of the way and you get to take it. The queen is unquestionably the most powerful piece in chess, but knowing when and where to use the queen can be a challenge. On the one hand, she has great attacking potential. On the other hand, the queen can get trapped, so be careful. The black queen can't escape. The queen is best used when supported by at least a few other pieces. Don't bring the queen out too early, however, or you might lose a bunch of time as she gets chased around. Queens can work very well when paired with bishops, like in this position. The light-squared bishop delivers checkmate, as it's supported by the queen, and also notice the dark-squared bishop prevents the king from escaping. The queen and knight also work well together, like in this position. She can also be deadly when used with rooks, either in front or behind the rook. And because she can attack so many squares at once, her best use is when directly going after your opponent's king. Checkmate. Watch as a white queen invades the black king side. Game over. Now let's see if you can make the most of your queen. Oh, 
as a quickie. The queen is white's only hope to survive this promotion and possibly win. Black is threatening to promote an, the A pawn on the next move. Use the powerful queen and find the only winning move for the knight. Use the powerful queen. Great job. Gaboosh. Dangerous A pawn. Damn, that do be a dangerous A pawn. Black is up a rook and is offering a trade of queens. Should white trade queens or can you find a stronger idea? Ah, uh, yes. 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 I'm checking in. I'm checking in. Ah, uh, forking? No, he just takes me. Um... Oh, it's a pup. He's a fat boy. This is a fat boy. That's a fat boy. <laughs> you seen Little Miss Sunshine? Never. You haven't seen it? No. Oh, you'd love it. It's such a good movie. It's like classic. Or can you find a stronger idea? I have this concept, right? Doing that, I don't know why. So that kind of leaves that open. But I have to move the queen somewhere. Um, I'm not sure where. Uh, a stronger idea than trading queens. Because he's got two rooks. What happens if you... No, you have to move the queen. No. Mm, it's kind of cool. There's... Well, you can move it straight up. No, just that one. Fair. Yeah. No. I need it here. White's born on F6. Would love to... For the queen to join the attack against the king. No. What? That's F6. I thought you were joining the attack on the king. What? White's pawn on F6 would love for the queen to join an attack on the queen. Oh, you have an eye for the attack. Black is forced to weaken the dark squares around the king. Can you find a forced mate in two? Wee oui, wee. Oui. Nice. White is down a serious material. But the queen and two bishops are pointing at black's weakened king's side. Can you find a crushing move that immediately ends the game? Yes, the rook. Da rook? Da rook. Da rook? Da rook. That rook? That rook. Immediately ends the game. And they meant the bishop on f6, rook. Bishop. That one. There. No. There. Up. There. No. Don't. No. There. What does that do? That doesn't end the game. No, I don't think so. I honestly think it's using the queen. 
Does it say that it's a meat? A meat. Do it. Yeah, because then he's got you. Oh, no, that... What if you take that top one first? Oh, it's Amy. Can you find the crushing movement immediately ends the game? But the queen and two bishops are pointing at black's threatened king side. Or you can just move. Okay, so you're pointing there, pinning that to there. So it's pinned. That's why. He can't take that because then that immediately opens up that file. Fantastic. White's king is in serious danger as black threatens checkmate on A1. Where's A1? Okay, that's being threatened. Can you find an aggressive queen move that saves white's position? Wee oui, wee. Oui. Nothing. It's not there. Oh, okay, we've got two bad boys down here. Incorrect. It's going to be something like this, yeah. Because that's pinned by this. Um, and then... Bishop. Ducky bishop. It's not a bishop. That is a rook. No. Sorry, my dude. Okay, that's pinned. Carrying a pinned. What if you move it to the little, little guy? Oh, remove it to safe. Remove this to safety and remain a piece up. Where do we start? Oh, whoops. Yeah. I didn't mean to click that. Honestly, I'd move here. Uh, where am I moving then? Wonderful. White takes the advantage of the pinned g7 pawn, winning a knight, and protecting the checkmate square on a1. Why don't we move the queen here? But then you can get all the castle. Yeah. Moves the king out of the pin, now threatening to capture white's queen. How can white move the queen to safety and remain at peace up? So you, it's okay. We just need to figure out where we can't move. So this is being threatened. This is all being threatened. Um, so we just can't move at any of these places. Makes more sense now. Dude, I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> Queen protects the weak A file while still looking at attacking because it was like you still needed to defend this file because it's it's piled up. Black's rook on B three is unprotected. Can you find a powerful queen maneuver that wins that piece by four? Wee wee. Wee three. E three. It's on B three. It's on B three. Yes. He's unprotected. It's not that. It's not that. It's 
not that. It's not that. Sit, sit is snot snap. This is hard. Single attacks won't work. Can you force Black's King to a square where you can set up a double attack? King. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So from there, we can set up a double attack. My goodness. Um, the king is the most important piece in chess. And knowing how to use the king effectively is the difference between winning and losing chess games. From the very beginning to the last move of the game, you need to know when to keep your king safe and when it's time to bring it out of hiding and use it to attack. Let's take a look at some examples of how to use your king. One important part of any chess opening is castling, so that your king can find a safe place to hide. The king hides while the rest of the pieces battle it out in the middle game, trying to control the center, win material, and attack the enemy king. However, if the game gets to the end game where most of the pieces have been traded away, your king becomes one of the most active, useful pieces on the board. White's king attacks both the knight and pawn. The king is actually quite powerful because he can move in any direction, one space. The king attacks both rooks at once, winning one of them on the next turn. So while the king is not fast, he's strong, as long as the king is not vulnerable. Once most of the major pieces have left the board, the king becomes a very strong piece in the endgame. Now that it's safe to move out of the castled position, both sides should activate their kings, moving them toward the center and trying to help escort the pawns up the board. Watch as one side activates their king and the other just pushes pawns, forgetting that in the endgame, the king is an active piece. White plays f3, opening up a path for the white king to move toward the center. Black should do the same thing by playing f6 or play king to f8. Instead, black just pushes pawns and white's king travels up the board and brings home the win. After h5, king f2, g5, king e3, f5, and king d4, black keeps pushing pawns, forgetting that the pawn on b5 is all alone and could have used help from the black king. Now it's too late. After f4, white plays king to c5. And after g4, white captures the pawn with king takes b5. After g takes f3, and g takes f3, black finally realizes that the pawns cannot advance without the help of the king, but it's too little, too late. After king f7, and king c6, Black realizes that white is going to promote the b-pawn, so tries to block the promotion square by playing king e7. Dreaming of getting to the b8 square, but white ends all hopes after king c7. Preventing the king from getting closer to the pawn, so black tries to chase after the pawn from behind with king e6. But after b5 and king d5, the king cannot catch white's pawn after b6, and white will promote to a queen and should win the game quickly. After looking at these examples, let's see if you've learned how to use your king. Unfortunately, the answer is probably no. White wants to castle the king to safety. Choose the safest option for white's king. Let's decide between castling kingside or castling queenside for light's position of the position positions. Why not? Great decision. White castles the king to safety. Since white's king isn't on the king's side, white can move pawns on that side of the to help attack the king's side. Oh, that's a good point. You kind of want to be on the opposite side to their king, so you can move those pawns up towards them. Great one. White's king is in check. 
can you find the best response to Black's attack? Are we? Oh, wee oui, wee, oui. you got it. The king may not be vulnerable, but can be a powerful attacker in the end game. Black's a rook and a knight are forked, so white will win the abyss. In the end game, the king is an active piece. Can white's king and past pawn outpower black's rook? Yes. Oh, that's hard. Hint. Uh, we we great job. Oh. You don't usually see White's king so advanced with so many major pieces on the board. Black's pieces are very passive. Can you use the king to create checkmate threats? Great job finding this winning move. It's almost correct. <laughs> almost. Do you know what almost correct is? Capture the check that also forces checkmate. All right, dang it. But uh, I won. <laughs> Not in the way you think almost correct. What do you want me to do? I don't want me to check with the king. What do you want? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? I love it. It's like, this also works. This also works. Great work on finding the one move checkmate. <laughs> it's not the exercise, though, mate. White's king is not happy. Not a happy king. Black is preparing to play rook to e6. Checkmating white. What? Oh. Um, let's move white's king to prepare to defend our weaknesses. Black's rook is ready to swing over to the king side and help the queen checkmate white on h2. How can white defend the weak h2 pawn in the in two moves? Uh, apparently that's not correct. This move does not guard the h2 pawn. It does. Move up one. Move what up one? I did move it up one. Move that piece. What? Oh, I meant to move it there. <laughs> Pawns have been called the soul of chess. This is because the structure and plans in each chess game are determined by the positioning of the pawns. Understanding how to use pawns is one of the most challenging aspects of chess. Pawns may only be worth one point each in the scale of chess values, but together they add up to eight. Pawns should be used for four main things. First, they're used to control squares. In this position, Look how many white pawns control so many key squares in the center. Black has a lot of pieces, but they have nowhere to move. Secondly, pawns are used to protect other pieces. Look here where white would love to capture some of those powerful black pieces, but they are all protected by pawns. Third, pawns are useful as battering rams to open up the position. Watch this little pawn on h6 open up the position by playing h takes g7. White captures the pawn directly in front of black's king 
and opens up the H file, allowing White's queen and rook to work together to deliver a checkmate on H7. Notice Black has no way to stop this. After King takes G7, Queen takes H7 is checkmate. Finally, pawns are most useful when they reach the other side of the board and become a queen. Watch this little guy go. Black tries to catch the pawn with king to c6, but black's king is too far away, and white promotes to a queen. Now let's see if you can make the most of your pawns. Now this is pawn racing. <laughs> Black thinks the bishop on c5 enjoys an excellent diagonal. Skadoosh. It's a weird move. <laughs> Black thinks, uh, can you take over the center on attacks of the things with the stuff? Yes. Nicely done. While... White puts a second pawn in the center and gains a time attacked against the attacking bishops. <laughs> Black checks white. Can you find another strong pawn move to gain time against the bishop? Yes. Yes, I can. White's bishop is in danger of being captured. Can you find the best defense? Bishop. It's a pawn's job. Pawns can force open important squares during an attack. Can you find a powerful pawn move in this position? Open up the pawn. Oh, nice. Lee done. Forces the black weakened the weak about the weaky weak weak. To weaken the black squares around the king's king and the thing about the stuff. Thank you. I win. White's queen and bishops are pointing toward black's unprotected king side, which pawn move opens up an overwhelming attack that wins material. Oh, that one. Oh, that one. It's that one. <laughs> now you can get two. Now you can get two? Yeah. You just take me, and then I take you, and then everyone takes everyone. And bishops checkmate against the g6, g7. Black will at least lose a knight to avoid checkmate. Oh. Oh. White's past pawn on a6 is two squares away from promotion. What is White's best move to prepare this idea? Where White? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so he's threatening. Mm -hmm. We don't care. Uh, apparently it's not that. Sometimes the simplest move is the best. Black's queen is forced to retreat to prevent white from promoting. How can white destroy black's defense? Destroy. The rook. The rook. The rook is on fire. Excellent play. Chess is a lot like team sports. You wouldn't send just one football player onto the field to win the game all alone. In chess, you'll want to use all of your pieces working together to achieve the same goal. Let's take a look at this position. Look at White's pieces. Notice how well they are working together. White has a pawn controlling the center, and notice how all of White's pawns are well placed, helping each other out. White's queen and bishop are lined up together on the b1 to h7 diagonal, 
pointing directly toward Black's castled king. White's knight on g5 is aggressively placed, joining the queen and bishop in attacking the kingside. White's other knight protects the knight on g5 and also controls key central squares. White's rooks are connected and ready to jump into action on the f-file once White's knight on f3 moves. Now look at Black's position. The pawns aren't controlling as many squares, and Black has very little control of the center. The rooks are passive, the knights aren't coordinated, Black's bishop is unprotected, and what is that queen doing on a7? Let's walk through a few moves to see what will happen. White's rooks are ready to join the rest of the team and enjoy great activity on the f-file, but White's knight on f3 is in the way, so White brings the knight into the center with knight e5. The knight attacks the unprotected bishop on d7 and also opens up the rooks to put pressure on the f-file. Notice how the rooks join the knights in placing pressure on f7. There's four attacking pieces total on that square. Notice the knight on g6 is pinned because if the knight captures the knight on e5, this opens up the b1 to h7 diagonal, allowing checkmate with queen takes h7. If black tries to fork white's knights with f6, white can play knight takes g6. Notice how all of white's pieces work together so black does not have a good defense. If black takes the knight on g5, this opens up the f-file and allows checkmate with rook takes f8. If black takes the knight on g6 with h takes g6, white will play queen takes g6 threatening checkmate on h7. If rook to e8, attempting to give the king an escape square if white delivers a check on h7, white now has another tactic using all of white's pieces together. Notice the pawn on g7 is pinned. Can you see how white can take advantage of the pinned pawn? That's right, rook takes f6. White captures the pawn and prevents the king from escaping to the f8 square. Queen h7 checkmate is on its way. Black plays bishop to e8, bringing the bishop to safety and adding another protector to f7. Black's scattered, passive pieces are no match for white's well-coordinated team of pieces. White now captures the knight on g6 with knight takes g6. Black is now forced to capture with the h-pawn because if f takes g6, the f-file is wide open and allows white to play rook takes f8, checkmate. After h takes g6, black thinks everything is covered, but now the h-file has opened a new line of attack. White's knight is covering the h7 square, so white uses teamwork between the knight and the queen to set up mate in one with queen h3. Look at how nice the queen and knight work together, threatening checkmate on h7 on the very next turn. Black does not have a defense because the rook on f8 cannot move, so the king does not have a flight square. If black attempts f6, attacking the knight, it's too little too late. White plays queen h7, checkmate. White's pieces worked very well as a team, combining the powers of each piece to overwhelm black's defenses. Now it's your turn to practice making your pieces work together. Uh oh. Uh, Black just promoted a pawn into the queen on b1. White is outnumbered, but can you make white's pieces work together to force a checkmate in two? Maybe. That was incorrect. <laughs> Oh, I can move here. No, I can't. Apparently, I'm not going. I'm not doing well. Did I do that before? You've gone there. Who am I? Yeah, I have gone there. Have I gone there? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'd do that. No. 
Um, hold on, but can you make White's pieces work together to force a checkmate into... Maybe? No? Can you repeat the question? Ah, da 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 No. No. Okay, hold on, let's just force. Okay. We can't go there. We have some stuff going on here. We have aggression here. That's all that's all gone. And the horsey. And the horsey. So the horsey can go all of here. And the pawns. And the pawns. Okay, so that's all that can I <laughs> But this pawn is pinned. So they're attacking. But if you can free the check. I think I just, I don't you see why that. I don't see why that's not the move. I don't either. Apparently that's the move. Great move. Since the black's king would be checkmated on h8 after, black moves to f8. Can your pieces work together and deliver checkmate to the next move? Yeah. Wow. White's king was chased up the board. Can you use black's pieces together? To force a checkmate in three moves, take it one check at a time. Oh, three moves. Hectic. On white's king. Um, I'm, I'm black? Yes. One. It's not check. Ladies and gentle bugs, we have done it. White's king is exposed. Can you use black's rook, queen, and pawn on d4 together to force a checkmate in two moves? What d4? <laughs> we can't move there. <laughs> Whoops. Human plus is correct. Can you bring home the victory with checkmate? No. Leave that there. You want to make it go backwards. Yeah, that wants to stay there. Okay. We're not doing that. But if you put it next to it. Oh, chosen one. Great work. White's king is nearly trapped. What do you mean nearly headless? Can you trap white's king and threaten checkmate? Are we black? We're black. Mm -hmm. Can you trap the thing? No. Yeah. But the horsey is not safe, right? You have to do that. That's not it. Not that one. Oh, no. Hold on. Who are we? No, hold on, don't worry about it. I'm running out of moves. Damn. 
Damn, Shorty. What's your name? Damn, Shorty! Only 40 correct moves. This move is incorrect. This move, this, this, this is also a strong move, but there is a forced checkmate to be found. Um, can you repeat the question? Let's use all three white pieces together to force checkmate. Step one, force black's king to a7. We need to force that. Force it. White's king joins the action. Take your time to find a forced mate in two. Oh my goodness. Stressing me out. One of the quickest ways to end a chess game is to overwhelm your opponent by getting an extra queen. And to get an extra queen, you're going to need to get one of your pawns to the other side of the board like this. And in order to do that, you're going to need what is called a passed pawn. A passed pawn is one that has a straight shot to the other side of the board without bumping into another pawn or being able to be captured by another pawn. The pawn has passed all the other pawn obstacles. Look at the pawn on f5. Is this a passed pawn? No, it's blocked by the pawn on f6. What about the pawn on b5? That's right, it's not blocked by any pawns and cannot be captured by another pawn as it advances up the board, so it's a passed pawn. One important feature of passed pawns is whether they are connected or not. Let's see what happens when you have a passed pawn that isn't connected. After b6, black can play king to c6, easily capturing that pawn before it gets to queen. In this position, white can save the pawn on b6 with the move c5. White has two connected passed pawns. Black will not be able to capture either of these pawns. Notice if black tries to take the pawn on c5, the other pawn runs up the board and promotes into a queen. Finally, you often can create a passed pawn by trading one of your pawns for one of the opponent's pawns when you have a pawn majority. A pawn majority is when you have more pawns on a certain side of the board than your opponent. In this position, white has two pawns against one pawn. This is a pawn majority, and white plays b6. After a takes b6, a takes b6, white captures back and now has a passed pawn. Can you make the most of your passed pawns? Let's see. Oh, wait, wait. Can you make the pass of your pants? <laughs> All green, baby. In this tricky endgame, can you find the only path for white's knight that prevents black's b-pawn from promoting? B-pawn. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Incorrect. 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 What are we doing? Any funny any. <laughs> oh, because you check. You check, 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 check made it out. You check it. I check it. I'm checking in. Excellent job. What's the next move for white tech night? You got it. Dude. Black's bishop is protecting both pawns on two diagonals. Which pawn should you advance to force a winning queen versus bishop ending? This one. 
back to get this one too. Okay. Oh, and then it's protected. Oh, wee wee. wee. Can you find a winning move for white that guarantees the past pawn you'll promote? Guarantees. No. Apparently that's not it. You checked the king. You checked the king. I did check the king. You tried checking the king? Yeah. No, you didn't. I didn't try losing the piece. Let's check it. Great work. Black's king now blocks Black's pawn from opening up the bishop's diagonal. Push your pawn forward. Ah! But the pawn was being blocked by the king anyway. No, but the bishop just could move forward. I could move forward, so then I could get to it. Uh... Oh! It's too big brain for me. It's okay, White's it's... past pawn is only three moves away from promoting. Push it. <sighs> Push it. Good Black's Rook rushes back to defend the back rank by pushing the pawn. Dude, this happens to me so often. I just usually don't have a rook to defend it. Black's rook blocks the promotion square. Can you find a way to force the pawn's promotion using Black's vulnerable black back rank? No? Oh. How does one... How does... With a pawn? With a rook? With a rook? Um, how would one do that? Incorrect. That's is he moving a pawn? Can you find a way to force the pawn's promotion using Black's vulnerable back rank? That's it. It's moving one of these bad boys. Black's rook cannot capture the pawn with white's rook if white's rook is ready to deliver checkmate on the back rank. It's moved across. But he would. Why would he do that? Because it's if he moved down there, it would be checkmate. Yeah, and then he moved across. <laughs> you got it, Black. Rook cannot capture the pawn because of the back rank. Finish the game by forcing a trade of rooks. This is why we're doing this. Because I just miss so much stuff like this. It's crazy. It's a wonderful thing when you have a pawn that can freely run to the other side of the board and queen. But that usually doesn't happen your opponent is going to do everything possible to stop your pawn. This is why you will usually have to escort your pawn with your own king. In this position, black uses the king to step in front of the white king to create a virtual shield so that the black pawn can run to the promotion square. After king to f2, white's king cannot move closer to the pawn, so the king tries another path to get to the pawn with king to d3. After g3, there goes the pawn. There's no stopping it after g2. And black promotes. In this next position, looking at the board from white's perspective, white moves the king up the board where it can protect its pawn for the last several moves of its journey. After king to c7, black is absolutely powerless to stop this plan. The pawn is protected by its escort, the king. There is no stopping this pawn. Let's look at one of the most classic endings. White has a pawn on the A-file known as a rook pawn. 
if black's king can get into the corner on the a8 square, black will prevent white from promoting the pawn, drawing the game. If white doesn't pay attention and just pushes the pawn forward, this is what can happen. Let's take a look. Black's king can no longer be prevented from getting to the corner on a8. White's pawn advances up the board, and Black's king keeps getting closer to it. White's pawn is now in serious danger, so White plays king to c6, moving the king closer to its pawn. After king a7, Black's king threatens to win the pawn, so White plays king b5, protecting the pawn. After king a8, Black's king sits in the corner, so White plays king to b6, forcing Black's king out of the corner. After king b8, black will simply move back and forth from b8 to a8 until white pushes the pawn forward with a7. After king a8, if white does not want to move away from its pawn and allow black to capture it, forcing the draw, then after king a6, the game is a stalemate. Black has no legal moves, but the king is not in check. This is why it's so important for white to block the black king from getting into the corner first and then focusing on escorting the pawn. That's why white should play king to c6. After king to d8, black's king gets closer to the corner, but white puts an end to that with king to b7. White's king blocks the king's path to the corner and will now escort the pawn up the board. Black plays king to d7 hoping to get to white's pawn in another direction. And after a4 and king d6, the black king has to spend extra time moving around the white king. a5, king to c5, and after a6, king to b5, black's king makes contact with the pawn, but it's too late after a7. White will promote to a queen on the next turn. Now let's see if you've learned how to escort your pawns. Let's pawn race. I'm both an escort and in pawn. <laughs> Black's king is trying to get to the corner of the board to stop advanced pawn. How can you secure... Darwin. Boom. Black is down a piece, but has a very dangerous pass pawn on b3. Can you find the winning idea that allows this pawn to promote? No, it's not that one. No, it's not that one. No, it's not that one. Yeah, it's not that one. No, it's not that one. So it's none of those. <laughs> what? Well done, Black King blocks the white bishop from moving to the diagonal on the B1 promotion square. <gasps> <sighs> He can't move there. He wanted to move there. But he can't. Oh, that's amazing. Beginner complete. All beginner lessons completed. <gasps> Damn. Boy. Are you going to win or draw this endgame as white? It all depends on your next move. Oh, guys and girls. Okay, hold on. I'm going to do this smartly and not just try every position. So he's moving which direction? Down. Up. Okay. If we move there, he moves there. Yes. Amazing. 
one second. White can't stop blacks past pawn on h5. But can you find a forcing sacrifice that creates a past pawn for white? Sacrifice your pawn. Which one? This one. Am I white? white. I'm white. Yeah, you sacrifice pawn. Oh, like run away. Oh, I can't move there. Sacrifice me. Who am I? You're white. What's happening here? Oh, I'm white. Okay, I understand what's going on. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Black to move. Can you save this position for black? Let's see. Uh, who are we and where are we going? Can you save this position? Uh, I want to go up here. Move, we're moving to the H file. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Great defense. Black refuses to allow white's king to escape the h-file. Let's play one move more that keeps white's king stuck on the h-file. Not quite perfect, but sure. <laughs> As you know, the object of the game is checkmate. On the way to checkmate, you have to gain a winning advantage such as queening a pawn before your opponent and using that extra material to win the game. In this position, white is so close to getting a queen, but there is a black pawn in the way. Can you find a sacrifice which opens up a line for white to queen? F6. Excellent. White sacrifices the F6 pawn in order to clear open the path for the G pawn to promote. If black doesn't take the pawn, white will simply capture black's pawn and promote on the next move. So after g takes f6, white's sacrifice clears the way for the g-pawn to promote. And after g7, white will promote well before black can, and the extra queen for white will win the game. Now let's look at another position. This position looks all locked up with no way to get through. Or is there? That's right. After bishop takes a6, white sacrifices the bishop. If black doesn't take the bishop, white will take the pawn on b7 and push the a pawn up the board to promote. If black captures the bishop with b takes a6, the b file is open for white's pawn to promote to a queen. After b7, thanks to the bishop sacrifice, white will promote to a queen on the next turn. Gaining a queen becomes much more important than losing a bishop. But what about this position? Is there any way for black to break through and to promote the pawn on a3? Yes, with a double sacrifice. After knight takes b3, black sacrifices the knight for a pawn. If white doesn't take the knight, then black will play knight to d4, attacking the pawn on c2, and also the bishop on e6 would threaten the pawn on a2. Not a good situation for white. After c takes b3, Black sacrifices a second piece with bishop takes b3. Black is trying to open up the path for the a-pawn to promote. If white doesn't take the bishop, black will simply capture the a-pawn and push the passed pawns up the board to promote. After a takes b3, black plays a2. Black will promote the pawn into a queen and overwhelm white's position. Now let's see if you can sacrifice in order to promote and win. White's advanced pawn on a6 is blocked and about to be captured by Black's rook. Can you find a powerful sacrifice that opens up the path for the a6 pawn to promote? A powerful pawn? Do you want me to sacrifice the queen for a queen? Wow. 
Wow. I guess you get rid of the rook. Hectic. <laughs> Black's bishop prevents white from promoting the pawn. Can you find a sacrifice that forces the pawn promotion? Pawn promotion. Who are we? We're white. Yeah, we're here. We're white. White wants to push the H file forward and promote, but things are not that simple. Can you find the only move that allows the H pawn to safely promote? The only move. The bishop. Ah, uh, that's not it. What do you want from me? Oh, okay. What are we trying to do? Let's find the reason Why can't we just do that? Because when it gets to here. Yeah, I don't know why you can't do it. Why, is, why do we care about that? Because he's going to then go there. Why would he just go there? I am running out of moves. Hint me. Black wants to play f4. I don't even know why. Okay, he wants to move that. Uh, I'm not ahead anyway. And like moving that down, okay. Uh, okay. This is like fully prevented it though. What do you want from me? And it's blocked that path. Mm. Oh, damn it. I hate when they're correct. <laughs> Black is ready to play Rook to A8. to prevent us from doing the things for the h6 can you find a sacrifice that will allow white to safely promote the h pawn we dark black's advanced c3 pawn is blocked. Can you find a powerful sacrifice to force open the C file or win a piece for black? Oh, oui, oui. Oftentimes the best moves in chess come from looking several moves into the future. Moves that look bad at first glance can actually be winning moves. Let's look at a position that seems to be even. Both white and black have three pawns, and if white pushes one of those pawns here, then black can just capture, and it looks like a drawn position. But let's look deeper. What is the goal of the endgame? To queen a pawn. If you can do that before your opponent, your queen can usually capture any other pawns and then force checkmate. So would it be worth it then to give away two of your three pawns if that third pawn could become a queen? Yes, it would. And in this position, you can do just that. The first move seems reasonable, pawn to g6. And if black captures, you can capture back, right? Well, you could, but that isn't the winning move. See if you can find a sacrifice that clears the way for you to promote a pawn. f6. Excellent. The pawn on f6 threatens to capture the black pawn on g7 and will promote into a queen on the next move. After g takes f6, 
white plays h6. White will promote to a queen in two moves and capture black's pawns well before black can promote. What if black tries to get an extra move in the pawn race by ignoring the f6 pawn and capturing white's pawn on h5? Let's see. After g takes h5, white will play f takes g7. Notice black's h pawn is no match in the promotion race against white's pawn on g7. After h4, g8 equals queen, white promotes first, and black's pawn is nowhere near promoting. After h3, queen g3, white's queen easily catches the h pawn. After g6, since capturing with the h pawn loses, does capturing with the f pawn work any better for black? After f takes g6, if you find the right move, white can promote one of the pawns into a queen. Can you find the winning move? That's right, h6. White uses the same idea. By attacking the pawn on g7, white is able to sacrifice the h pawn so the f pawn can run up the board and promote. So after g takes h6, white is able to play f6, and white will win in the same way we just looked at. Now it's your turn to practice sacrificing your pawns to force a promotion. What do you want from me? 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 Black is attacking white's pawn on g5. What is white's best maneuver? Maneuver. I guess to do this. Uh, I've just ruined my life. Hmm. Let's see how I go. Did I forget what it was? Damn, pawn. Black has only one pawn move that doesn't lose. Which move is it? Just do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Just copy from the side. It's funny that white. It's funny that white can win with this, but black can't. Yeah. It's the person that moves first. But black's moving first. Why can't, what if you capture it? Why can't we do that? What if you did that? Because he will win the race, that's why. Uh... It's whoever's closer. So you're just stopping him and he up. Yeah, so if you're further away, then you get wrecked. Black is threatening white's weak pawn on b4. Sure is. Can you find a way to force a winning pawn endgame? Pawn game? Winning pawn and pawn game? Did I do that? Okay, let's, let's, let's... Let's piece this bad boy out. Okay, he's, he's threatening that. So, this move does not force a winning pawn in game for white. Try again, you trash bag. Uh, 
it's not that. Apparently it's not that. Apparently it, it is that. Oh my goodness. Oh, I guess because you know how to win this end game. You can trade queens. You move that one up, you move that guy up. So from there you move that up. And say he takes you that one. Then you move that one up. No, you haven't got that one. Oh you do have that one. Yeah. Because you've already paid off. And then he can either take or you can take it. Is that how it works? Anyway. Um. When deciding to trade pieces, it's worth remembering the phrase, to take is a mistake. Unless a trade improves your position or makes your opponent's position worse, you should think twice before automatically trading even pieces, such as a bishop for a bishop. There is a time when even trades are actually good, and that is when we are up material. If I have five apples, and you have three apples, and we each remove one apple at a time, who's going to run out of apples first? The person with less apples, right? The same idea applies to chess. Even trades are no longer even if one side has more material. Let's look at some examples of trading pieces to win the game. In this position, white is up two pawns, but it will not be easy to win since white's king is exposed to checks from black's queen. If white could trade the queens, white's two connected past pawns would easily win the game. Can you find a way to trade queens and enter a winning pawn ending? That's right, after queen a8, check. This forces black's king to move. After king f7, queen takes g8, check. King takes g8. White will easily win the game after a4. Black's king cannot stop the a-pawn from promoting into a queen. In this position, black is up a queen for a rook. Notice that black has two advanced pawns on the queen side, b4 and a4. White's rook on f3 is trying to slow these pawns down and prevent them from advancing. With black to move, can you find a way to force one of black's pawns through on the queen side? The easiest way is to remove white's main defender, the rook. After queen takes f3, black sacrifices a queen for the rook because now black's pawns on the queen side cannot be stopped. After g takes f3, a3, black will soon promote to a queen and should win the game easily. Let's take a look at one more example together. In this position, is any side ahead in material? That's right, black is up an entire rook and bishop. Notice though, White has a pawn on g6 and a queen on h3, causing trouble, threatening checkmate on the very next move. What if black could force the queens off the board and black would still be up a rook? Is a rook enough to win the endgame? Yes, being up an entire rook should be enough to win the game. Can you see how black can force the queens off the board and trade down into a winning endgame? That's right, queen f1 check. Black trades a queen and a bishop for white's queen. Black is willing to give up material to enter a completely winning endgame where white has no counterplay. After queen takes f1, bishop takes f1, king takes f1, black can easily win this endgame, beginning with the idea of removing white's advanced pawns with rook to d8. Now it's your turn to practice trading down Boop. Ooh, tank daddy. Bring it on. My oldest offender. I see that you have gone up in skill ranking. 
can we find a game winning move? Can we, can we, can we? What do you want from me? Um, I went up a little. Yeah, you did. You deserve to. You're pretty, you're pretty damn good. It's pretty damn annoying. <laughs> I'm fun to play with. The real question is, what do you want from me? <laughs> um... Ho 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 ho. Ooh. Uh. Um. Okay. Um, okay, you're threatening that. What can I draw on the board? Um, okay, you're threatening that, and I don't like it. I don't like it when, um, chalk turns to cheese. I don't like it. 54 seconds on that move. Epic. Dude, you're too quick. Oh, what just happened? Hey, who's cleaning? That's your cleaning. Yeah. Damn you. Yeah, I do. I have to do nothing. He's gonna take that. I don't like it. I don't like when you do this stuff to me. It's so annoying. <laughs> Ooh That's a dangerous move, that D5. I need to watch that. Oof.
Um, that's not section one. You can trade, but it's not going to be helpful. Oh, stop it. Stop it. This is probably the first game that you haven't just been so disappointed at every move I make. So it's making me feel better. Uh, we need to start a different fight. Um... I don't know what I'm doing here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've given him a piece of the puzzle. Of the puzzle. Um, Oh my goodness, my goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Ow. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. No, 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 no. <laughs> If I take that, he takes me, and then I can take him, and then I think that's right. I think that's fine. So that's four. Yes. That's not me. No, I know. It's pass anyway. You can't take me, right? I'm down a lot of pieces right now. Mm -hmm. Give us the trade queens. Maybe maybe the upper. A whole bunch of moolah, maluli, malula bar. Um, 
That's why I want to do this. This goes to this to get these. Yeah, I can get it without losing it. Okay. They were down six. Oh, damn it. He's on to me. There's something to be done here. What's he going to do next? Shouldn't trade, but... Probably not a great idea. Oh, I didn't see that. No! <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna do this. Friends. Oh, that's interesting. his move. <laughs> like, what is happening? <laughs> Having no time left. What? <laughs> Don't insult me. I got fifty I got I got like almost a second left. Bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> Finish the move. And then we can just start again. Nice. 
<laughs> you won. <laughs> oh, hilarious. <laughs> Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo.
You <laughs> What did I miss? You could have checked, mate. What would have been checkmate? His queen sacrifice. Really? If I take that one, you take that one, I take that one. Ah, good one. Nice. Lucky I'm a dummy. Yeah.
Okay, if I move out there. <laughs> it's gonna clean. I'm gonna need to take take it now and then I can take my bishop.
<laughs> oh, that was close one there. All right, can go one more, and I can. All right, remember all that training. That's what we need to do. Ruby Lopez. Bring on the Ruby Lopez. Weird. Damn you. <laughs> Quite the Oof.
Black one. Brutal. Oh, dude. That was a missed win. You know what? There was a point where I was winning. Damn. Damn. Um. GG. Awesome. Thanks for playing, man. That was fun. Um. But as for chess, I think that's long enough. You're still better than me. But we'll get there. Anyway, thanks for playing. Thanks for the games. Thanks for the lessons. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.